We're live, we're kicking, and back on today's episode, I have Adam, how are you doing? Very good, Jimmy. All good. So on today's episode, we're going to cover all things insecurities. So when I was <laughs> saying to you about this subject, I sent over a lot of stuff to you to, uh, this week right, about what we're going to cover, but during that time I reflected back on all my insecurities over the years, and it highlights a lot, a, a real big subject, what do you think? Yeah, I think... Everybody's getting insecurities, don't they? And as we were talking about just before this, like it's in it's in every aspect of life: your body, your relationships, your financial, your work. Like the list goes on and on and on. What ones did you find that were highlighted to you? Did you think about me? I honestly, I sent you the points across, and I was like, Do you know what? I'm going to reflect back and all my insecurities over the years. And I started way back when I was younger, and believe it or not, the first one that popped up was my voice. Oh, really? <laughs> I swear to God. No, I think I'm not saying I'm an amazing speaker. I have obviously worked on it so so much over the last little period of time. But way back, my family used to be brutal, especially my brother. Oh, I think all families are brutal when they start taking the piss. But yeah. my brother, my stepdad, would take the piss out of my voice. So, honestly, say I would speak like a robot. So that always. <laughs> No, you're laughing. Honestly, <laughs> I mean, not once have I ever thought. Just I know, that. honestly. So that I was always self-conscious in my voice, growing up, mate, and how I spoke. Honestly, because of that, and I think that highlights probably a good point where we're conditioned, we are insecurities when we're born. We obviously born into this world. We know we don't know any better, but then we get through. We go through life or we go through the system, family, people say things about how we look or how, how we speak, which yeah. I was saying. I know people probably thinking, what? Honestly, that was something Do I was... Think it's worse with family? Because oh. like they see you all the time and then they just, you know, it's like with families, they just dig and dig and dig. I, I think a lot of people re resonate with probably the one with families and, and how that family environment and what type of environment it is. And it's something we, I've spoke to a lot of people on this podcast is how you're brought up and how you're conditioned to grow up, whether you're brought up to say you can go and do great things, you're good yeah. you're good enough, or you're brought up to say you can't do not that I was brought up saying that I wasn't good enough, but I was brought up in my household that was quite brutal with taking the piss out of each other. Definitely. And you don't really think back then, obviously it hurts you when you're getting the piss to you. <laughs> you don't really realise the effect it can have on you later on. And this is going back to when we started the boot camps and start making video yeah, yeah. and I was getting on video and I was like so conscious and then I had my brother in the background taking the piss at me making videos and I can remember the very first video for anybody that wants to watch it uh, it's on the body fit camp page and you scroll all the way to the start and it's why you should choose body fit uh, mate I actually seen that video it was just that one day popped up <laughs> do you know what I'm talking about it must have been a memory that popped up yeah it was, so it was that that video and I was like fucking hell man Is that? then I started playing them I sound good what will people think blah 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 so that was the very first one it, it highlighted and I'm like and it it, it made a like a, a, a it, something off of me going do you know what like you, the things that you're most insecure about could end up being your biggest asset yeah definitely and I, and I think going forward my voice or how I speak or speaking in general will be so that was the first one then I, obviously gambling, you could imagine a gambling addiction. What that caused, insecurity-wise, was astronomical. That that tore my self-esteem out, my confidence. For years I was living I was living a lie, pretty much. Obviously projecting to the outside world that everything was fine, but inside I was a, gam was a gambler. So you could imagine the insecurities that brought up. Then they reared their head in, in relationships with with, with women, so the honestly, it's such a, a wide topic, and I think where we'll start, we'll start with something that we've worked with for years is, yep. is body image and, and things like speaking and how people look. Uh, well, I think I've, I've actually had a problem with my body image since I was a wee boy, mate, and it's because I said well, I've watched all these nineties and eighties cartoons, you know, He Man, Power Rangers, all these four that are wrestling. Wrestling, mate, I love wrestling. All these folk that are built and I'm this skinny wee boy that just has ambitions to kind of look like them. And it never happened. I honestly remember being 16, mate, and I bought a, like a muscle and fitness magazine. It was um, Triple H, the wrestler, was in the front of it. it. Gave you his eight-week plan. 
And in my head, this is a 16 year old, I was like, if I just follow this for eight weeks, I'm going to have a little Triple H coming into mm -hmm. this eight weeks. You can imagine that, that didn't happen, <laughs> mate? But it's been, it's been an issue for a long time. And I think when I became a PT, it highlighted even more to me insecurities about my body and what people thought a PT should look like. And I wasn't happy with it. I was comparing myself to all the other PTs that are around me. And I thought, oh, nobody's going to buy from me because I look smaller than everybody else. So I think that was a, it's a problem. It always has been, I think, as well, with the PT. But I remember when first starting, I'd go to like parties and stuff like that. And I'd be dead self-conscious about what I'm eating. People thinking, oh, he's a PT. He can't be in McDonald's. He can't be eating this or that. Mm -hmm. And that was a problem probably for about the first year when I started PT, mate. I was just self-conscious about what, how I looked and what people thought of me. And I think looking back, I probably wasn't in the best shape in the world, but that played in my mind even more. Do you know there's a wee bit of, because I know your story, do you know, it's something we'll talk about anyway, is a wee bit of imposter syndrome because you start, you were working in ASDA, I know your story, friend, this is working in ASDA starting shelves then, you get into this business that seems as glamorous, like personal training, obviously we know it's not. Do you think there's some, maybe... 100% me, I think I've, throughout my whole entire life, I've suffered from imposter syndrome. Even from the likes of when the boot camp started to get big, I'm like, oh, did, did I deserve this? What makes me any different from everybody else? Like, are people are going to think, oh, he's just a guy who used to work in Asda. What, what's he got to know? And even, mate, even now, we're like, what, I've done fitness for, what, 10, 11 years? I think there's still times where I post a video and I think, oh, I shouldn't be talking about stuff like that, but of course I should be. But I definitely have that imposter syndrome attached to it. Yeah, and it was so, obviously we were speaking off camera here and I was saying the exact same thing was over the last six months or so, when I've started putting myself out there in social media and I've started getting loads of traction, get loads of followers on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and I'm like, Fucking hell, there's like nearly a quarter of a million people following me now for like four four thousand, let's say, yeah. and I'm like, fuck, dad, is, is this am I ready for this? I've got all these people following me, there's one may lead them, show them direction, and then it's but for me, with imposter syndrome, I think it's a if people see it can be a good thing. Mm -hmm. Where it's always got to keep you on your toes. So you've got to strive to keep being better and keep showing up and being better. Does that make sense? It does. I'm just going to touch on the point you said there about people now think that you should be like a leader and drink sometimes when you're having a bad day and you're like, I don't know, maybe like you can't get your shit together, you forget about appointment or you can't be bothered working out, drink that plays in your mind a bit because you feel like you should be something. I, th I think for me is I know my own standards, I know my own values, mm -hmm. I know where the direction I want to go in my life I've done a lot of self work before that point of things taking off for me I would say so I'm feeling as I'm comfortable but there's always got to be that ugly voice in your head who's got to try and put a wee bit of self doubt in there because of what I've came through in my past obviously I don't come I come from a background let's say council estate so it's not like a background that's set up for success Yep, you know People for council estates are not meant to go and be like leaders or have loads of followers or do great things and be successful in life. You're just meant to live a normal life if you go with society's expectations. But I feel, and I know this makes it, but I've got a lot of belief in myself now. Loads of belief in myself, not just for that fact, but just for the adversity I've overcame. So the fact that it did take over and I did get that wee bit of imposter syndrome, I had to check myself to go, do you know what? You do deserve this. You you believe in yourself. This is a message you're getting across to people, but it's it it was good because it gave me that sense that right. Let's keep pushing forward and and strive to be actually better and no settle for for honestly what no settle for what you're like. The new I think I heard something not that long ago, mate. I think it was <clears throat> everybody will know the actor Matthew McConaughey, yep. and he says. He strives to be the person he is in ten years' time. Yeah. So he's I know that one. so he's continually chasing who that person is. So for instance, when he was twenty five, he's like, right, I want to be strive to be the thirty five year old me. Who is that person? 
Like that's where I look up to. I've got to keep focusing and, and pushing towards that. When he gets to 35, I've got to strive to be for the... So that I've got that in my mind. I'm like, right, who do I want to be in 45? Because now I'm 35, what type of person? Who do I want to push for? Where do I want to be financially, mentally, emotionally? What does my relationships want to look like? So I'm continually striving. So having that wee bit imposter syndrome and coming across that, obviously that content for him, I was like... Do you know what? That makes sense to keep pushing. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? No, it makes total sense. I think, as you say, it's like a, you're chasing something that's one better and two, you never actually quite reach because every time you reach another benchmark, you're looking at the other guy. What does he go like in 10 years' time? So I think I think it's a good point from him. I love listening to Matthew McConaughey. He's got like a great way of speaking. <laughs> He's got a great way of like reflecting upon stuff and making it sound easier. Easier, and it's something I've done like starting speaking and talking is look at all these great speakers people who as you say a lot of people love listening to him he's got an amazing voice he's on that app cam which sends you sleep yeah. and it's i and i it, it, i think when you are obviously feeling insecure about something whatever it is if it is imposter syndrome or you do have insecurities about your body image is sitting down and going right why am i insecure why am i insecure about my body Reflect back, maybe are you conditioned with something in your past? Am I like myself, where your family have been brutal and they do take the piss out of you, and you're insecure about, say, your ears, your nose, or your for one for men, your hairline when you start getting older. So I think it's taking things into perspective, then going right. How can I work in this insecurity, whatever it may be? And the one that for body image is what we spoke about in the last podcast was diet, exercise, making sure you're in the best shape possible. <laughs> and I heard something the other day, it, it, it was about body image and what people want to feel comfortable with, is they want to feel comfortable just being able to take their clothes off with a light on and have sex. Mate, I think that's, honestly, I think that's probably what most people want is that experience, lights on, have sex, and... I think it's the wee things, particularly if you've got, I suppose anybody, I was going to say kids, but when you go take your kids swimming, I think that sometimes when people are like, fuck, I'm going to have to wear like a swimming costume or trunks and that, I'm going to have to expose myself to a, a, a pool full of people that I don't even know. And that's probably when everything starts to kind of kick in for people. And I think some people just avoid it for that reason. Um, holidays probably another good one, isn't it, mate? Which is obviously, having worked in the industry for 10 years, mate, how often do we get people that come to us? I go on holiday in three months and I want to look my best possible in the next three months. So yeah, I think that shines through for people. And it's people do people think they want to look ripped, mate. Like have a certain ab safe for guys or whatever. You're right, people don't want that. They just want to feel comfortable, better than they currently look. Mm-hmm. I 100% mate and I think it all comes down to our conditioned with body image as you've highlighted like watching the WWF at the time watching wrestlers how they guys are obviously jacked up in steroids ripped yep. to hell you just have to go on Instagram feeds now especially for women like and you go on Instagram for a woman it must I can imagine it being difficult when you're sitting there going I can hell look at her in that bikini in Marbella or Ibiza and how that then affects your confidence and your self-esteem because you start comparing the body images. I think it's got a lot better recently with highlighting the fact that you should be comfortable in your own skin. Yeah. In fact, it's fine to be whatever shape, size that you are. But it doesn't take away the fact that people are on their phones 24-7 scrolling these things and seeing people putting up their best pictures. What people don't really realise, mate, about these best pictures on Instagram and people on holidays, as you've said there, they've probably done like a 90 day or 180 yeah, day, yeah. six months intense transformation just to get that airbrush picture or that picture in Ibiza or whatever. You see it all the time, people train all year or whatever, train for six months, go to Ibiza and get absolutely hammered, take drugs, get steaming, fucking do all the, and ruin their body after yeah. looking after it for six it, it, you know, I've done that myself, so I can't be a hypocrite. I've done that. <laughs> Do you know what? But I have. But then, it, then you start comprehend. Going, that doesn't even fucking make sense. No, it doesn't. Just to get a picture in Ibiza or anywhere to look. Instead of going, 
do you know what? I'm going to actually do this for myself. I work on my own insecurities. I build a lifestyle, and I'll maintain it. And then when I come, I go on my holiday, I'll still enjoy myself. But nine times out of ten, people come back their holiday and they just revert back into old bad habits. And revert back. And how often do we see it, mate? People go away for holiday and they just never come back. Mm. They never just get back into that routine. Do you think that's because they've went so hard and heavy and they've lost the point of what they were trying to do in the first place? You say, like, trying to get this ripped physique when really you should just be saying, I want to feel a bit better, I want to look a bit better forever. And chase, you know, like that, that quote you're talking about, just chasing up after yourself year after year, I can be a wee bit better, wee bit better. Is it because people want a quick fix? I think it's they've got the wrong idea of what they're wanting for their life instead of just solely living your life like I'm going on holiday so I need to get in shape or oh fuck my wedding's coming up in a year, I need to get in shape for my wedding instead of seeing it as right why am I no shape, what's the underlying issues, what can I do better, how can I improve my lifestyle, what things can I identify so it's got to enhance me. What is my why? Why do I want to change? What is my goal in the future? Yeah. Is my goal to go on a holiday? No, your goal's not to go on a holiday. Your goal is to go on a holiday when it's a reward for, I would say, working hard. That's mm-hmm. what I use holidays for is, right, I've worked hard for a certain period of time. I'm going to go and relax and recharge the batteries and recharge myself. So I think it's more aligning yourself with where you want to go in life, what your purpose is when it comes to like things like working on yourself physically that we've already spoke about in the previous podcast and how that then will determine, right, I'm starting to put in better habits, better routines for myself, I'm starting to go to the gym, I'm starting to build momentum. The holiday will be, it's a, it's a reward, but when I come back, I get straight back into it. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah, it's definitely the straight back into it. I think that people struggle with and it's... It's because they are they are kind of doing it for the wrong reason, you know. It should be, you know, how how do I want to feel? I want to I want to feel better. What, what does that involve in the process? What's the process of doing that? And it will be exercising more, but it won't be exercising to the extreme. It will be better nutrition choices, but it won't be starvation mode. Mm-hmm. It's all those sort of things. A hundred, a hundred percent, mate. When it comes to when it comes to, it, I think most people have got a fear of either failure. A success, so they don't set themselves up for long term yep. things. So the like for the average person like myself, I work, I work ninety five, or I was in the Marines and I'd live for the weekends. I would never really think, of, like, what kind of lifestyle do I want? What kind of career path? Do I, what kind of direction do I want to go in my life? All I focused on was the next weekend. Those you'd focus on was right my two weeks at eat. So for example, when I was in the Marines. My whole focus would be around like little blocks. So I would focus after in January. I would focus to Easter. Right, let's get to Easter, and I can have a. I can get my holiday, my two weeks, three weeks off for Easter. When we come back for Easter leave, I was like, right, let's focus the summer. I'll get my summer. Then let's focus to 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 Christmas time. I'll yep. get I'll get my Christmas. So, so I think it's more so seeing the bigger picture where you want to go with your life, and then. You can sit down and go, right, instead of me training just to go on holiday or whatever it may be, I can actually have a plan of action here to know, right, I want to build something for myself. Do you think people struggle with that because it's a, it's a long-term thing? So it's like you have to sacrifice a little bit on the long term? Or on the short term, even to get what you want in the long term. Ah, it's in, well, we're having a world of instant gratification, don't we? It's like tff, you're getting dopamine hits left, right, and centre on TikTok, flitting next thing on social media, whatever it may be. It's it's try to flip your mindset to understand like these instant gratification things at the weekend, such as going out and getting pissed or whatever it may be is having long-term consequences as opposed to you setting a plan for yourself, a long-term plan, like something like, obviously, we we're talking about body insecurities and working on your body. Having the body of your dreams is the, the ultimate form of self-respect and delayed gratification of yeah. building it there. Somebody who has got a good physique, who's put a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of discipline, a lot of sacrifice into getting that body through being 
consistent when we got to the gym, through being consistent with our nutrition, through turning down probably nights out drinking. Do you see where it goes? Do you see where it goes for there? I think sacrifice is a good word you use there because people I think see it as a bad thing. Like, oh, I need to sacrifice going in and night out every now and again. But it's about the long term benefits of doing so. Even you could take chocolate, mate. People take the chocolate, overeat, the takeaways and that for the short term gratification that they get from eating it. They want that we fix that we feel good. But it doesn't help them in any way, shape or form long term. But how how can somebody kind of change that mindset of it's okay for me to suffer a little bit right now because I want to respect the, the long term goal I've got? You you think about it, we're attached to the instant gratification of this world. We're attached to the comfort of eating the chocolate. We're attached to the toxic relationships. We're attached to the entertainment, the people dancing on TikTok, the short videos, the people just doing silly things. We're attached to that. We're attached to the dopamine hits. So it's about detaching. Yep. Detaching for the instant gratification and focusing on basically the delayed gratification, the things we've just spoke about, mate, like exercising, building that plan for yourself. Making sure you're upgrading physically, mentally, emotionally, working in every aspect of your life, such as for toxic financial insecurity. If you are struggling or living week to week or paycheck to paycheck, this is set a plan for yourself. Detach with instant gratification and go out and get pissed every weekend and taking drugs and blah, blah, blah. And go, do you know what? Let's go for some delayed gratification. Let's go for some long term positive things in my life, such as staying in and saying no at weekend, like night suit, yep. saving some money, start putting it towards things that you want to do to better yourself, investing in yourself. What's the best? What pays? <laughs> An investment in yourself pays the best interest, mate. And I think people have got it so wrong, they'll, they'll have gripes about going and getting a gym membership for 20 quid or spending... 150 quid on a personal trainer for yeah. a couple of sessions a month for a programme that's got to help them work on their body insecurities, work on their self physically, mentally, emotionally. But they're more than happy to go out and spend it at weekends or nights out on all these days. I've done it myself. But when we have been doing this for years with the boot camps and tra- it's trying to get people to realise that. Right, this, like for a boot camp membership, right, this might be 70 quid for the month. But what else do you spend 70 quid for the month that takes away for you? 100%. Instead of adding any value to you, such as, as we've already alluded to, all these things. I think, as you said there, mate, it's the. People see it as 70 quid, but it's like the things that you would change to already reap benefits, you know, not going out as much, making better food choices. You probably already saved that money alone. Yeah, just from doing better things, so it's it's kind of free when you think about it, really, because you're making changes and you're helping yourself long term. I think we talked about that a previous one, mate. But your social circle then starts to change and things become easier. You don't get asked out as much. You don't want to do these things as much, and you find other things to do. I think a lot of people do these short term gratification things, like going out boozing to feel good, because it's all they know. They don't know anything else that can make them feel good until they find a different sort of social circle. Yeah, hundred percent. Like we we're talking about social circles and, and relation relationships. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> as that's probably why the biggest the biggest ones when it comes to insecurities is the social. And I was talking about obviously detaching from toxic relationships. Is for years and years when I was a gambler, my insecurities in relationships with girls were fucking. Honestly, see if I tell you half the stuff out and through my head or half the stuff, you wouldn't believe me I was that insecure in relationships. I think it's common, mate. It would be when I was, I had to say a wee lad, before the ages of probably 22, I was insecure as fuck. And I think, because I get cheated on one time, mate, mm. every time like, they went out, that played in my mind. Oh, they're going to cheat on me again. And you sit in panic mode and you're like, don't go. And you're, you do all these things that aren't you really even befitting or you as a person. And then obviously... Once I get a bit older and a bit wiser, I was like, well, there's nothing I can do about it. If they do it, they do it. Like, it's not going to make a difference to my life. It's their choice. But, so what kind of things were you, was it for you, mate? Obviously, cheating was one for me. I just worried was it everything. It? Was it? It? I don't know if it was, I think it was more so the fact that it, it, 
I was a gambler all, all my life, my addiction. I think more so because my self esteem and my confidence. And I was living a lie. <clears throat> MD knows gambling. It's probably why in the worst, worst addictions because it's so easy to hide. Yeah. So bringing these sort of insecurities into a, a relationship for me was just. I don't. It's hard to. It's hard to explain how I felt there. I was just an insecure young man. And then when I get an say I get, I, I get an attachment, I was I didn't know how to deal with me. All these insecurities would lead like things like that. I would believe that was cheating because I didn't feel good enough within yep. myself because of what I was. I knew what I was, and I was always projecting this 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 different image to everybody else. So I, there was loads of that. Me, I would think like he's similar, but you would think oh she's cheating with us. She she's not text me back. Blah blah. And then you just start overthinking, your mind will get into overdrive, which then these insecurities rear the ugly head into the relationship because you start acting like a dick. Right. And you start saying, where were you? Or what were you doing? You're like... You're saying these things, you're like, that's not even me, but you're, you're still saying them. Yeah. And then there's a lot of things come out over the years, like such as like attachment styles and how... <clears throat> And how these things are formed, such as your childhood, if you went through any trauma in your childhood, how you were brought up with your parents, what were your parents like, were they loving, were they distant, and all these things then impact you into your later, 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 later years. Things like your parents coming for a broken house or coming for a household that maybe your parents were cheating, then separated, and then you start getting this... You get you form this belief system because your parents are maybe loving, there may be a connection, they may have an attachment together. And when you're getting to say like a, I think the critical age for what I've read was around about your teens. Makes sense. And you see that happening or you and you and you see that happening with your parents, you then form that belief system that, that then what a relationship ends up like. Does that make sense? Makes total sense, mate. I think I, I can relate it back to obviously my mum and dad are still married to this day. So I had quite a good sense of that growing up and your Sunday was always family day, mate. It didn't really matter what else happened during the week, but on a Sunday we always did something as a family. And I think that's something that I've still brought into minds as well. We always like to do something as a family on a Sunday. So I think you're right. What you've grown up with and been attached to it's kind of what you're going to think is going to happen or at least you're going to start to show the same sort of things because you think, well, that's the way it should be. This is the way my mum and dad were. Yeah, I, were. I had a hundred percent. And when you do feel like that, and it, I think it all comes down to it, it does come down to attachment because your first attachment formed is like with your mother and your, and your father in it. Mm -hmm. And when, say something like, them being distant or you're getting abusive or you're getting hit or whatever or you're getting told you're no good enough I think then people then when they day form attachments it's some people obviously search for that same feeling and are really, like yes. with their mother or their father so that then causes the issues so if you've had a good healthy upbringing where you've been supportive your mother and your father have told you you're good enough, you can do these things, they've gave you attention, they've made sure that you've got proper values and stuff. I'm not saying this is everybody because people can turn out different, of but course. most likely I guess you've got to turn out and have a healthy relationship with other people when you form attachments. Do you think sometimes but that can be a mix match? For example, somebody that has grown up with like the mum and dad having a good relationship and then somehow gets together with someone who hasn't had that, Think that can cause severe clashes because it's a yeah. Because you go, it's, it's like you go with somebody that's got a secure attachment to someone who's obviously got an insecure attachment, and how they end up becoming secure and insecure because of the person that they're with. Yep. And that, how you obviously you can imagine that causes. I think attachment. I think attachments in life we can be attached to everything, such as people, businesses. It's about understanding when. It's understanding, right? I need to understand myself first. Do you know what I mean? I need to look at my why do I do the things I do? Why do I feel the way I feel? Why do I think the way I think in all these situations when it comes to relationships with people, friendships, romantic relationships, whatever you want to call it, and start reverse engineering it. Like what was my childhood? So it was my past. Like if I went through a traumatic experience, if I had a relationship with somebody who's cheated on me, who's abused, who's treated me like shit. 
then you can start saying, do you know what? Everything is everything. My feelings and my emotions and the patterns of the way I think have been conditioned into me. Yep. It's something I spoke about in the live and get, getting group was when you're born, are you born? So it goes back to when you bo- are you born with confidence. I don't think you. I think you're either conditioned with confidence or confidence is conditioned out of you as you grow up, depending what lifestyle. The I, the, envi- I, the environment that you you, you live. And I think that's the, the exact same as when you're growing up I and mean, it's the, the relationships that you form. Is It's either conditioned into you, be healthy relationships or conditioned out of you to obviously be wary. And when you get that attachment style, it's all due to the factors, like how you've been brought up with your mum and dad. See, with relationships, we, we kind of touched on it just before they come in, Jink. We fake, we fake it too much to start with. I think that co- is what causes even more issues. To fucking start. hell! I was the biggest fucking faker ever, as you can imagine. I was meeting people and I was a, a, a get addicted gambler, but I was sure, oh, look at me, I'm fucking brilliant. I'm this, I'm that. Then it three months come in and you like you can't hide that. Do you no. know, you can't hide and. Look, Everybody's guilty of that, mate. It's like when you start dating and that, you've put your best self out there, didn't you? Especially if it's somebody that you really, really like. You wear the best stuff, you make sure that you're turning up best, you know, no arguments. Every, then people start getting comfortable and they're like, I can't keep up this fucking act. It's, that's the thing, mate. It's an act, isn't it? Nobody can keep up an act all the time and eventually the cracks are going to show through. I think you see it a lot with people they're in relationships and then it's going all right and then they decide to move in together and that's often the turning point because you can't hide it when you live with somebody mate as I'm sure you would be able to hide your addiction and stuff like that like, they'd be like what you doing where are you going how come you don't you're not acting like you were previously a hundred hundred percent it makes it makes sense they say you really find someone out you find out who you're living who who the person is when you live with them is that the same yeah so I, it's a hundred percent I, I think a lot of people will, will resonate with that one about the start of the dating processes we're always got to show our best self in it is because we want to get that person especially if you, like, you want to get them hooked in you want to get them attached and then when these do come together I think both get comfortable with each other and then it's when you let like down the mask, as they say, or you let down the, the I guess, I let down, like down the mask or the guard or whatever it is. And that's when, I that's when people start seeing. Do you I know? Think that's when I probably want to touch on me. It's actually in relationships. Do you think people don't? You know, at the start you put all this time and effort into it, getting to know them, doing stuff with them, yada yada yada. You think part of the problem is that two, three, four years down the line, people just stop investing into their own relationships. I think that's why they, they come to a demise, sort of, because people just stopped investing in them. I think, I, mean, I honestly think if you take it back to like your, your mother and your dad, and they're, mm-hmm. they're older, your grand and grander, society's moved on so much. I think people are that used to, as we were talking about instant gratification, I think people get bored to be people too easy these days and they've got so many options on social media, on Instagram, on Tinder, on... Didn't they have any of that in the past? No, we didn't. I think it's a case of the... I think the traditional values that were back in the past, like your granny and granda, they would meet at, <coughs> they'd meet at 17, they would be married by 20, yeah. and then they would die together at fucking 70. That's long gone, and I think it's all, don't they, society changing? And... And things, I'd say it's things moving forward, but such things as like your grander, your dad used to go and support the family. Mm-hmm. Your mum used to stay and watch the kids and bring up the family and, and stuff like stuff like that. But no more so, we're moving into a new modern era, as they say, like women are going to work more, women have got careers more. So women and men are becoming more like, like the both of them are doing the same type of roles. Which is difficult. Which is which is di- which is which is difficult. So I think that's where the problem comes in in relationships now, mate. Is it's society's moving forward and there's loads of options and the roles are becoming very similar. Mm-hmm. Women are taking on a mere a more ma- masculine role. We're going out and getting careers and getting jobs, and so the husband then there's all this pressure with the family. 
I think also comes into consideration is finance. Finance. I think that's the. I think that's what I'm trying to say here is finances. Is the cost of living is, what is has increased so much that women and men have no option whether to both of them to get to work to it, survive. You do have to now, as you say, it changes the dynamic of everything. You know, previously the mother would bring up the child the way they want to, but now it's kind of like. Maybe it's the, the babysitter or the nursery or something like that that's actually kind of teaching the child to grow up and they're kind of learning the values from them as opposed to the actual mums and dads. But I think you're, when you're talking about like your granddads and that been married for 80 years and that's they've just seen it through. Yeah. Maybe this generation doesn't have that sort of resilience that they had where they would like talk it through, see it through, stay to the bitter end. No, as you say, we're just like, you have an argument, it's all, it's over. It's too, it's too easy though yeah. I think because because of the the things available you've got a date literally on your fingertips mm -hmm. the next day if you follow up with somebody yeah. so I think it's it's easier for people to go over people now because you've got that many options Do you think it causes people to always look for <laughs> sort of love from somebody else like, oh, they don't love me so I'll just go find it from somebody else now yeah, yeah. rather than spending time Getting to love themselves, they just thought, oh, we'll just find somebody else. I think this comes with age. Mm -hmm. So when you're younger, your 20s, women and men are, are, are slightly different. But I think when you're younger, you're like, right, I'm in my 20s. I, I can see what's out there. There's, there's plenty of fish in the sea. So you don't entirely have to settle down with someone if mm -hmm. that you don't feel that they are your match or they suit you what you what you're looking for. So I think the younger generation, when you're younger, it's fine, but I think when people get older as they start to go, I'm getting older here now, I'm getting to my thirties, I, I want to settle down, I want a relationship, I want a farm. I think your values and how you see your life changes. So I think it gets to a point. And when you're older you're like, right, I think it's time to settle down here. But you look at back at your past, you've had ample opportunity settled in. Uh, yeah. With, uh, some, with, some, with somebody that you clicked you with. You could have, I, I suppose it's a difficult one when you're young. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's a case of you have to use your youth to your advantage to go out and try different things. But you're right, I mean, you could have passed up the one because you thought, well, the grass is a wee bit greener over there, I'll try this one. Um, definitely an age thing, mate, I think. As you get older, your your values and that change. You know, people start thinking about kids and families, and you don't you don't want to be in a dating app every second day, mate, do you? Like looking for the next one. And I think as more and more people settle, as you get older, the the chances of probably somebody matching up with you becomes less and less because you're taken away from that pull a wee bit, aren't you? Yeah, your 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 options obviously get smaller and smaller as you get older, mm -hmm. in your age range, I would say. And I think it, we're talking about relationships, dating, and we're talking about insecurities. If you've got insecurities, just go and work on yourself first. Yeah. Go and work on your flaws, go and work on the things that hold you back, go and do reflections on, for instance, if you're in a, a relationship and you've broken up or you've been broken up with or you've done the breaking up or whatever it may be, is I think that's always a period of reflection for somebody. Go right, where can I be better? How can I be better? What areas can I be better in? I made a video this morning, it was about that somebody getting broken up and how that negative energy can be harnessed as a positive to go yep. into your own self care, into your own healing journey and use it to make a catalyst to obviously heal all the insecurities. And when I say heal all the insecurities, is heal them all everything for your past that's held you back so you become a secure person secure in your own skin so you can move forward with your life i think that's where securities came for me mate and contentment is i took that time out for myself as i called it monk mode just take it monk mode will, uh, you could it can work both ways obviously okay. take, taking it because i'm a single man i could just detach for everything yep do you know what I mean? I could t detach and just take a, a, a time of solitude. When I say monk mode is, I think, how monks live. They live in solitude. So when you do go like monk mode, 
is to take solitude and solely work on yourself. Work on every aspect of your life, your health, your career, your business, whatever it may be, your finances, all your insecurities. So when you do come back out the other end, that you're a brand new person. I think it's, it's important, mate, because I think too often people do just jump in to another relationship once they finish one. They don't actually have any period of re- reflection for themselves and you're just going to end up in the same problems over and over again if you don't take the time to realise why X, Y or Z happened because I'm not saying it's always your fault but nine times out of ten you're an underlying factor in the way you've acted or behaved and the only way you're going to change that is by taking the time to get to know well why did you do that, what caused it and how can I prevent that in the future you know what what makes me feel like that or react like that a hundred a hundred percent a hundred percent mate and it is it's it's a massive massive subject we could be here all day talking about relationships dating and insecurities for me it's just taking that time out to work on yourself is what I've, i mentioned there as you could go monk mode as i was going to allude to is it's different for people who have got maybe families or kids you can't just go right i'm going <laughs> <I just laughs> i've got i've got to go to a wee desert island and <laughs> Work on myself yeah. for six months, the time I come back, I'm all singing, I'm all dancing, obviously, you have to fit it to your own life, but just withdrawn for the chaos of the, the relationships, I would say, your own chaos and the, 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 the people you attract, and just solely bringing yourself back to a place, say, right, this is a period of reflection, I'm going to work in every area, break your life down to areas like health, your, your personal development, your career, your business, uh, and your pet, the relationships that you've got run about you, such if you have got kids or your your family relationships, whatever they may be, and solely focus on these areas, every area, mate. I think for me, that's what I try and do. Is I try and break my life down and I look at these areas. What what needs what needs most work at the uh, moment? Yeah. And things like you can go right. Does my body need more work? Do I need to become physically stronger, fitter, healthier? You can work on yourself physically for a period of time. What does, am I happy in my job? Am I happy with my career? Do I like where my life's got to go? Is that an area where you can focus on? Finding a part, finding, although I always say your purpose is you, but nine times out of ten, if you're doing something you enjoy every single day, your life has got to be much easier. Looking at your, of course, finances comes into a big part to play, the insecurity around finances. If you're fucking skin or you're, you've not got much money, this is probably a good area to look at. How can I be financially stable? What, what am I doing at the moment with my money? My spe- we've, we've, we've spoke about my spending it. What am I doing for my personal development? Am I investing some time into doing some workshops, reading some books, whatever it may be? Right, how is my relationship with my kids? Am I sure not being a good dad every day? Am I sure not being a good mother? Am I being a good role model? What is my relationship like with my work colleagues, my friends? And then start and just look at these areas of your life and go, what needs serious work done to it? And yep. focus in on them. Don't go, I'm going to do it all at once. Just look at the area. And then when you've got that area, it's about finding, then when you've got it, for me, when I've got it, it's, uneven, it's just about maintaining it all. There's um, a good thing online, mate. It's called The Wheel of Life. It's kind of like what you've talked about there. It's just a big circle with those different areas of your life. <coughs> Sorry. And... um. I often do it and I just shade it in just to, you know, it gives you a chance, you know, like, body, how's that out of 10? You rate yourself and then you can look at it as a whole and say, right, well, my body's an eight, but my relationships are a one. So maybe I need to spend a wee bit more time doing my relationships, yeah. my money, or et cetera. So I think, I think it is a good way, mate, is to sit down because the thing is we like to focus on things we're good at, don't we? So if you're physically in shape, you'll like, oh, just put more effort into being more physically in shape, but that's something you enjoy and you're good at. You should probably put it into sort of, the other stuff that's lacking a bit. Yeah, a hundred percent. If you go to the gym every day and you're fat, you're strong, you're eating healthy, you are thriving in your career and your businesses, but your relationships are always shit with women or men. That's an area you need to work on. You need to highlight it and go right. Why am I good in all these areas, but my relation every time I get into a relationship, it's a fucking car crash. Yep. That is where you need to spend your time yes. and maintain these other two areas so you can bring this up to, so you can live in a state of calm. So you, and you know withdrawn when it comes to like, for instance, when it comes to a relationship, you're like, right, I feel comfortable, I feel secure, 
all these aspects are taken care of. I've now taken care of this one. I've looked at the deep line issues, which causes me to go after the wrong type of people who. <clears throat> Why I feel a certain way in relation, whatever, and that could be also related to to the physical aspect. Your relationships could be you could have health, but your physical side, your health could be doing here, yeah. so you need to go and work. So I think that's what people. I think the best thing to do is is just look at the overall picture and look at the areas that need most focus on when it comes to insecurity and go right. This is where I fucking really struggle in life. This is my my insecurities stem from let's focus in there and then does that make sense? It does and I think but probably people struggle with that bit mate is the sort of finding that balance amongst it all you know as you say for if all of a sudden we're investing into relationships am I still able to still be able to invest into my physical body you know if somebody was always going to the gym and then all of a sudden they're kind of pulling it back but it's finding that balance I think as you say but it's probably the thing that people struggle with the most is finding balance in all areas of their life because people are tend to be quite good at one thing and not the other. You see a lot of men that are great at business but their physical body is failing them. Or people that are great in relationships and great with their families but their financial aspect is failing them. So it's a, that sort of balance that we're trying to find, isn't it? It's a, it's a, it is a balance and I find the one we're talking about is financial insecurity and how financial... I'll say financial insecurities became more prevalent after the pandemic and how people are struggling with their finances, struggling with right where, what can I do to, to make some money? I think this is an area that people can, instead of be scared of money, mm-hmm. as opposed to right money's bad, money's right, you know, I don't know how to deal with money. Look at that as an area where you can go and work on it. Like, why am I bad with money? Why am I insecure about money? Why have I never get any money? Why? And not even that. This is me not just talking about people who don't make a lot. People who make a lot of money are bad with money. Oh, do, do you sometimes know, the worst, mate. Do you know what I mean? The, the worst. So what is your relationship like with money? Why are you spending all your money? Things like I've done for a period of time is when I'm going to buy things, ask myself, I buy this because I want it, because I need it, or to satisfy some emotional feeling in me. Yeah. Nine times out of ten, mate, I don't buy fuck all anymore. No, mate, I'm just not <laughs> buy anything, to be fair. Like, <laughs> I'd much rather an experience. Like, there's not many things that I want for in life. Like, all these adverts do, do nothing for me. Like, you can't really convince my mindset to buy something through an advert. Like, I'm the type of guy that will take, oh, I quite like that, think about it. Nah. And then, like, Three weeks later, I'm like, nah, I don't really need that. Drives Carl nuts, mate, because sometimes she'll, like, even holidays, I'm like, ah, that sounds like a great idea. And I'm like, nah, we don't, we don't really need that holiday. I think sometimes she, she, she's the balance where she's like, nah, mm. booked it, because we, we actually do need it. Whereas I'm like, no, nah, we'll be all right, we don't need that. I think the whole finances it comes into is what other people think of us. Yeah, I know. So when, a big part. when people are going, right, I'm going to go and buy this good clobber or this good watch, are you buying it for yourself or are you buying it because you want people to think a certain way? I think that's the biggest, one of the biggest insecurities. If people write, I'm going to go and buy this fucking, this, this car. Yeah. This big shiny car. Are you buying it because you enjoy it? Are you buying it because you want other people to think that, oh, look at me. I think that's what too many people worry about, mate, is what other people think of them. I think, if even going to like houses, mate, people buy houses that, yeah, lovely houses, but does somebody need like four or five bedrooms if you're like a a, a three person family or just a couple? And you know, the old story are, are you are you just working to pay for the house that you don't actually stay in because you're out all the time working to pay for that house? People need to stop and think like, what, what do you want from life? Like that, well, this house make you happy. How many times you bought something mate that you thought oh, this this is going to be it? And two weeks later, you're like, oh, I'm still paying for this. What did I buy this for? I, f- I think people should, I think for me, and what I've learned about materialism is, is to start buy, start investing in yourself for long-term financial security. Yep. As opposed to making that, like things like buying houses, buying cars, or, these are the biggest financial decisions people will make in their life. Massive, mate. Which could be the most, catastrophic as well yep which would cause you obviously 
years and maybe heartache, having a commitment like that, especially if you're obviously working for a company, you get laid off, and you got to pay your mortgage, and you got to pay your car. Yep, definitely. If you're paying it up monthly. It's the same thing if you're paying up a... Uh, if you've bought your house, and you've bought it, and you've bought it for the bank, and you're just getting a loan for the bank, you're just paying it up, as opposed to if you get uh, your rent, and you're just paying your landlord. Yep. Yeah, that, that. So at any point in your life if something happens, if you're not financially secure, you're not working, you've got a business, at any point that could be took off you. Yeah, because the same thing happens for both, mate, doesn't it? The same, the same thing happens for, like, the same thing happens for both. So I think when we get back to worrying about what other people think of you, it's something they see all the time. It, it, it's, it's one of the things where if you sit back and go, why am I doing this? Because I'm worried about, or I'm, I'm overthinking about that, what that person thinks of me. And that's what causes people most fucking, most pro overthinking. And is. Um, I think uh, people living well beyond their means, mate, is, because, you know, you can get, fuck, I was buying something the other day there, mate, I kid you not, it was like six pound from Amazon. I had this, is it Klarna or something like that? So I had the option to pay it up over three payments. Six pound, mate. Yeah. Like that—that that shouldn't even be an option for people to be able to. P- See if you can't afford six pounds as a one-off payment to get something, and you have to pay it up over three instalments. Like you're fucked, effectively. Like, and I think the things like that that probably need to be regulated a bit more. Like people shouldn't be able to just pay up trainers, mate. You can pay up anything now with this clown. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, used to be, I used to be cat when I was back. I was thinking way back catalogues in that you could oh, do you remember the like you had the cat was it Little, 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 little Woods little <laughs> that's what I was going to say the Little Woods you used to buy the fucking Air Max <laughs> and all that off <laughs> that, but that's what we live, we live obviously in a, a consumerism world where it's all about that's how the world goes round we're chasing material things we're chasing the big houses the cars no for our own internal happiness it's because we want to go that's to our ego in it it's like look I've got this. Then you soon realise, like, uh, I've got it now. The the shiny object or the shiny the shiny object syndrome is wore off after three months, and you're looking at your BMW and you're like, fuck. Oh, that's it. I, <laughs> I'm paying for this now every month. It's yep. it's fucking. It's a hole in my bank account. Definitely. Uh, so it's it is, it is it's probably something that for me over the years when it comes to this subject. As I was doing that for years, we gambling, trying to get money, trying to impress others. I would be out buying people drinks, but I would be one of the type. I was one of the type of guys, and I got to the realization as I was just causing myself so much destruction, self harm. And then when I did work on myself, mate, all these things we've spoke about, it's the things that make me happy. It's just the simple things in life now. I think I can have a, be the I same, can mate. have a cup of coffee. I can walk Rambo. I can. I've got. Uh, uh, I'm not worrying about paying my bills. I'm happy. <laughs> Callum's actually just started watching this program, mate. It's kind of like rich people, poor people, and they swap lives. They swap holidays, mm-hmm. and the the poor people go on the rich people holiday, and vice versa. And a lot of the the rich ones that go on the the, the poorer people's holidays is often it's like caravans or volunteer things, and yeah. that. they hate it to start with. But as the time goes on, they're like, oh, we realised we can we can have a laugh and smile on that without spending vast amounts of money and I think people forget about that money money doesn't make you happy it can buy you better experiences to to fill you with some joy but in itself it doesn't actually make you happy I, I would I would I would 100% agree that for making money myself I just look at it and go it's just money it's just it, 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 as you say it gives you the opportunity of freedom Yep. where you can, right, I'll take my family a holiday and that'll be an experience I can spend time with them. Obviously, we need money to live in society, to have a roof over our head, to buy food, to get the essentials. That's just the world we live in. And we do have to have a wee bit more disposable income to invest in ourselves and do these things that we're talking about. That does buy happiness, like, in, in that sense, but fundamentally, like... Deep down, you're like, it's just paper. Aye. You just say you probably get more joy if you're walking Rambo, mate, than I do, mate. you are all from like buying a brand new car or anything like that. I get, that's where I get my joy for, just the simple things, sitting down, have a coffee, walking Rambo, 
I'm building my business. Yep. And that's that that is it. Nothing else. That that's why I get back to about making these financial decisions. I don't even buy any designer stuff. I'm happy with a black t shirt and a pair of shorts. It doesn't mean anything. Yep. I, I, when you see through the illusion of the system and the society we live in, the pitfalls of society, these are all pitfalls like getting out getting pissed every weekend, getting out of gambling shops, gambling your money and the roulette machines go to the casinos, the drugs getting the drugs every weekend, the online shop, um, all these sorts of things, the porn site, whatever it may be, these are all the pitfalls to hook you in. Of course. Get you as we talk about the instant gratification take your money off you and it becomes a vicious cycle. But when you start waking up and go, do you know, life's a game. And in this game, I've got a certain amount of time. And all these things throughout life, such as these things I've mentioned, are all traps. If you continually keep falling down that trap, you know, every weekend you're pissed taking drugs, it's going to be a hard fucking long journey up that hill to get back out of it. It'll be massive. Ma- ma- massive, mate. <laughs> and that's where I'm like, when you start waking up, you go, well, nothing actually, nothing actually means anything in this physical world. Okay. What actually means something is the connections I build, the relationships I build, my family. Yep. Am I healthy? Have I got enough money to make sure I can eat? I've got a roof over my head. I can buy some experiences so I can make connections with different people. And that's fundamentally, when you get to that point, when you start seeing that, you're like... Ah, cool. This is this is it. I'm, it, it. A sense of calm comes down you, and that's what happened for me, mate. I don't know. I see beyond the physical, and that's all it is. Yeah. It's a material. It's like a, a physical reality. That's why we've got five senses in it: see, hear, touch, smell, and whatever the other one is. And that's no, that's, that's how you that interact. Me, isn't it? That's how you interact. So, I if you get anything you want to say, mate, about how somebody should. Because we are personal trainers, so somebody who will go with this one to finish up, somebody who's insecure <coughs> about their body image, their confidence, how they're feeling about their self, what would you say would be their first steps? I mean, the first of all, mate, they've obviously they've recognised that the physical body is the thing that's maybe lacking in them, but by putting your physical body first, so, you know, maybe get, starting with steps and making better food choices is probably like, a great place to start and then we'll maybe look at can we work out can we get a trainer somebody to guide us speed up the process a wee bit from there by doing your physical body you're going to help increase your confidence because you're you're working on you you're going to feel better you're going to look better I think that's a win mate 100% so for anyone who is looking to upgrade physically that's where they start 100% so thanks very much Adam, uh, you're going to be a regular feature on the podcast. So if anyone needs any help, guys, with their physical, mental, emotional self, then please feel free to send me a little DM and I'll get you set up on the Live and Kitten programme. Cheers.